<sighs> Time for a therapy session for our favorite. Um, I was gonna say teacher, but is is Mr. Ryota a teacher? He's not, he's not necessarily a teacher, right? Then we, if I remember correctly, he was a uh, dorm manager, so as well as an acting uh, counselor, I guess. But anyway. We slip into Mr. Ryota's office without any hesitation. Oh, I think I that. I forgot to save. I should save. It's important. Uh, Mr. Ryota sell it. Well, I mean, is it important? I don't know. Well, maybe. Actually, I, I do want to go back, actually, and try out different options, right? Because I don't know. Like, for example, you see here, you know, you can engage in the waifu and have a silly adventure with them, or you cannot. I wonder what happens if you just don't. <laughs> If you just don't interact with them, is it just nothing or is there an alternate path? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll explore that once I've uh, went through this visual novel. Right? Once I went through like a playthrough, I guess. Uh, Mr. Ryota settles behind his desk. He's still eyeing me closely. Maybe he trusts me about as much as I trust him. You're really different today, Yama. What's bothering you? Do I really look that haggard? I thought I put up a passable front. That obvious? Once upon once upon a time, kid, I was also a student. I pulled all nighters for exams, just like you. Except or right, except this doesn't seem like it's related to an exam. Exams are the first thing from my mind at the moment, that's for sure. Mr. Rialdo, about the murders, he frowns at my question. You're still interested in that? It's difficult to keep my composure up, but I managed to look him straight in the eye. Please, just if you could answer one question of mine about it. I can see the reluctance in his gaze, but after a long moment, he finally relents with a silent nod. You said that the victims all had some kind of psychological problem. Could you... Could you look up their connections with... It's just a shot in the dark. I don't even know if the killer is someone who I've met in person. But I've got to see if they have any relationship with... Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. Okay, what do we... Okay, okay. I guess... We're trying to find a clue here. We're trying to find if anyone has... Or rather, the killer has any connections, or was it the... Who was it? The victims, rather. See if they have any relationship. Say, any of the victims have any relationship with any of these people. I mean... Well, okay. The answer is probably Yahiko. Remember? Yahiko had the happy club in that, and they were all probably involved. Even before he made the happy club. And we've seen him like lately. He's been talking to like Haru and Shoji and those people, right? Or at least, well, actually, we only saw him talk to Haru, right? But he did mention that he did meet the other people, right? Like Shoji and Akane and, and those people. Like they had a meeting, right? The first meeting and stuff. And I think the happy club is about helping people who are, you know, depressed, right? And the people with the psychological problems were probably, you know, Dealing with the stress of their issues. And so Yahiko made that club specifically for them. I think. Um, I think the other two answers don't make sense because Natsuki... Natsuki is too mysterious. We don't know much about her. She's probably like a level above even Mr. Ryota. So he, he wouldn't know even. Um, and Airi... Yeah, Airi is too easy because Airi... She's, I mean, those are just rumors, right? There's no like clear evidence that she's related to the people who were killed other than the fact that they just talked to her one time, but that doesn't prove anything, right? So, it's Yahiko. I think this is the, this is the correct answer. Yahiko Ikari. Maybe, 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 I don't know. <laughs> Someone started a club for depressed and troubled students. It was called the Happy Club, and I thought it had the stupidest name in, the, in existence. But that club was for depressed and troubled students. Students with psychological problems. Is it really just a coincidence? Is there anything between the victims and Yahiko Ikari? Yahiko? 
like dumb blonde friend Yaigo? Have you gone crazy, kid? What the hell would that ditz have to do with these crimes? Just, can you look it up, please? I hate this doubt. Everyone in my sights is being painted as a potential target. Irie, Miss Ryota, Yahiko, even myself. I just need to find proof that I'm wrong. Right, well, you're a weird one, kid. His fingers fly over the tablet. I see its surface flashing a myriad of colors like strobe lights at a concert. Then he freezes and drops the tablet. It hits the floor with a shrill clatter. I instinctively wince, almost expecting it to shatter into pieces. What? What the? Gingerly, I stoop forward to pick it up. The screen is a mash of information tidbits from the school records, patter feeds, and photos from Instacam. <laughs> Instacam? You mean Instagram? A group, of pic a group picture of a bunch of teens hanging out at the park. Faces tagged as Yahiko Ikari, Akane Tsukino, Shoji Hasegawa, and Haru Bunya. Yeah, he, they were at the Happy Club, right? A matching pat from Yahiko, announcing the very first meeting of the Happy Club. Um, an update from the roommate of Midori Maino, claiming that Yahiko was harassing Midori with the most horrible pickup lines, and she doesn't even like chocolate. A picture of the orientation groups before school started, including Toma Hayashi as part of Yahiko's orientation group. He led orientation? Orientation? Before school started? Hmm. Interesting. No, never mind that. What is this, some conspiracy? It's like the universe was just waiting for me to dig into Yahiko Ikari so that it could flood me with information that couldn't possibly be coincidental. The common thread is... Yahiko? No, no, this is ridiculous. I reject this reality and substitute my own. Mm, I think you're stealing that line from somewhere. Well, I mean... I'm, maybe there's someone else in common, but there's a trend that I can't ignore, and even worse, each victim is getting progressively closer to Yahiko. Uh, Mr. Ryota, if this is true... I look to Mr. Ryota, but he's only staring at the floor, uncharacteristic shock etched all over his face. Mr. Ryota? Huh? Oh, sorry. You know how sometimes you get so focused on something that, well, you kind of forget everything else? Does that happen to you? Often. Not you. You seem pretty fixated on the idea that Yahiko Ikari is related to these murders. You're not serious, right? I don't know. Everything seems like a possibility. It's as if I was stuck in a dark room. Oh, I accidentally scrolled my mouse wheel. It's as if I was stuck in a dark room with only vague shapes and sounds, feeling my way around, and then someone turned on the floodlights, leaving weird spots in my vision that have to be hallucinations, but somehow aren't. Ding dong. And you know, I guess Yahiko might be related, or he might know something rather, right? I don't think he himself is the killer or anything like that. At least I don't see it that way. Hmm. Just the bell, kid. Guess you better get to class. A class? We're on the verge of discovering something vital about the killer and I have to go to class? No, I should go. More than anything, I need to cool down. Give my mind time to process the shock. Well, bye, Mr. Ryota. Uh, take care, kid. Hmm. And you know, when Mr. Ryota was like staring, you know, being focused, I think, I think he might know something that we don't, is the thing. Hmm. Well, oh well. I sidle out of the office and race down the hall, my mind still hazy with thoughts. There has to be another explanation. I must have missed something. Maybe I just shouldn't think about this until later. Hmm. I wonder if we maybe we picked the wrong option or hmm or is there a correct option or I'm not sure. It might be that all the options we picked like Yahiko, Airi, and Natsuki, they might be not all like like uh, correct, you know? They might all be just threads that kind of sort of be related to the killings but not really. 
Then again, we did have that flashback, remember? Or rather, not a flashback, but rather uh, like a, a glimpse of our memory lapse where someone was, was stabbed a bunch in an alleyway. I assume it's Haru. And we saw Yahiko, right? So that, that makes him kind of suspicious, so I don't know. Hmm. When I arrive, I notice that Yahiko is already in his chair. I instinctively freeze when I see him. Worry is still fresh in my mind. But wait, didn't Ryui say that Yahiko had been arrested? After the subway accident, hadn't he been taken under suspicion of Shoji's death? And yet, I saw him in District 6 last night. I definitely ran into Yahiko Ikari, and we definitely had some kind of conversation. True, a lot of time passed because of my lapse. There were a good number of hours between the subway accident and the alley accident. But still, is it possible to... S for someone to be released that quickly? Actually, maybe, yeah. Because Yahiko's, like, he's from a rich family, right? So, I, like, I wouldn't be surprised if his family just bribed the police. With a bunch of money. Did he use his personal connections? Did he call on his parents to bail him out? No, no, no. I'm thinking about this the wrong way. He must have been released because they found out that he was in innocent. Maybe bureaucracy isn't as I inefficient as I thought. Maybe the case was finished because it was urgent. Yeah, as if that's likely. Uh, no, stop thinking about this. This is, this is crazy. I temporarily shut my thoughts out and slip into my chair. Yahiko seems to be browsing through a patter feed. Ah, uh, wait, we talked yesterday, back in District 6. It didn't seem like an ordinary conversation either. Are we on good terms? Neutral terms? Bad terms? From my memories, I guess that the encounter was negative. If I act strangely, he'll find out about my lapses. What do I do? Ah, then again, he's got someone's death weighing on his mind. Someone who he knows. If he was an innocent witness, he'd be traumatized. He'd be different. How exactly do I act with someone who... Why, hello, my good minion! Well, I guess he's just acting as if nothing happened. And you know... Well, I mean, is it all that bad that he might know our memory lapses? I guess, well, I mean, I guess if he's a quote-unquote bad guy, um, he could take advantage of our memory lapses and and bad things will happen to us, I guess. But at the same time, if, if he's just good old Yahiko, like, I, I guess it really depends. Like, do we trust him? Do we trust anyone? I guess that's the main theme right now. Hmm. Like, he's just smiling as always. Yeah. I jerk backward, but he only grins brightly, waving his hand in front of my face. Feeling a bit under the weather? No worries, have some coffee. Straight from Buckstar Coffee House. He thrusts an insulated cup at me. I peer through the lip. Sure enough, I see thick caramel liquid that froths in a warm whirlpool. Hesitantly, I take the cup. The heat caresses my cold hands. Is it poisoned? My mind supplies. I, I shut it down. Oh no, no need to thank me. I'm naturally this generous. A sharp chill runs down my spine. Is it possible to act so natural after seeing someone die? After seeing blood? Tasting blood? Hearing blood? Why is he grinning? Why is he acting like nothing happened? I didn't know Shoji that well, and even now... Even now... Yahiko... Hey, sounds like that's the warning bell. I'm gonna chat a little with Misaki. He bounces away with a spring in his step. What? Hmm, maybe this has something to do with our exchange yesterday. There's no other reason why he'd be, com why he'd be able to completely ignore a death. Much less the death of someone he knew. Unless... A student, seat, please. The rest of the class rushes to their chairs. The commotion drowns out my thoughts. I force myself to pay attention through class. It's preferable to getting visions of bloody, beaten bodies. I answer the teacher's questions at every chance I get and actually listen to lecture. Apparently, it's such a rare occurrence that the entire class is staring at me by lunch. <laughs> Actual participator participation. Still, break is break. Any momentary curiosity immediately halts the first chime of the bell. Yahiko tugs at my shoulder, his face still alight with cheery grin. Lunch? Calf? The old gang? I steel myself and look straight into his eyes. 
I saw you at the train station where Shoji died. <laughs> That's blunt. Yahiko freezes. His expression flickers for a single moment, almost too quick to catch. What happened? Why were you there? His face flattens. A stab of guilt wrenches through my stomach, but I try to squash it. I need to know who I'm talking with, and who's talking. Come on, minion. If we wait too long, the lunch line will take forever. A hungry overlord is not a happy overlord. Yahiko. Well, I guess there's no forcing you if you don't want to come, even if you're a minion. Uh, Ta-ta for now. He quickly prances out of the room before I can slip another word in. I can't suppress a shudder of revulsion. The fact that Yahiko's acting the same as he always does is... Well, it's terrifying. Moreover, I've done nothing to ease my fears about my lapse. I still have no clue what happened yesterday, why I saw a bloody body, why I ran into Yahiko. You are disturbed. What happened? Oh, it's you. So, you are disturbed. What happened? Is what Irie would say. I almost jump at the sudden voice from behind. Irie is seated on the edge of the table, munching quietly on a peach. Oh, nom nom nom. What the? Where did you come from? Classroom 2D. Well, I know that. She only tilts her head at me. Like a perfectly calibrated machine, waiting for a simple command. Like a soulless doll ready to kill. Okay, now you're getting very paranoid, <laughs> Yama. No, 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 I need to stop this. These are people I'm talking to, not machines, and they're not killers, and I'm not a killer. We're just ordinary students in ordinary school. Something is bothering you. I falter, my words cold in my mouth. My thoughts are building up in my head, pounding in incessantly or incessantly begging for an exit. Should I talk with her? Yes, of course. I feel I feel Iris just a scapegoat, right? She seems like I don't know. I guess quote unquote creepy, but it's just that she's a little bit different is all. You know, she doesn't it seems like she doesn't know how to talk with other people, right? She's not used to uh interacting are socially interacting with other human beings, I assume. Probably because uh, she was isolated, you know, if I had to guess, from uh, from the outside world until recently. So, yeah, well, I, I trust her. I trust the Peach Gamer Loli. Yeah. I had an interesting day. What happened? Well... I saw someone died, maybe killed by my close friend, then I was a jerk to the only person who's stuck by me, then I went to the sketchy part of town where I saw a mutilated body, except I can't remember how because my brain is only half functional. <sighs> Not much. <laughs> she evaluates me for a moment from behind her peach. Nom nom nom. Let's go to the rooftop. What? She only gestures for me to follow her as I, as she pops out of the classroom. Well, at the very least, I guess it's a better place to talk. Like most days, the rooftop is practically empty. Irie plops down in an obscure corner, nibbling at her peach. Sit. I obligingly settle next to her. She pushes, pushes a peach into my hand. You're quiet. A free peach, yay! She states this placidly, the irrefutable fact of a textbook. I only stare at the peach. Is this for me? Yes. I can eat it? Yes. Hesitantly, I bite into the fruit. It's succulent and soft. I don't realize how hungry I am until that moment. I've had a plenty of chances to eat, but little, a little appetite. The, so the sobering thought brings me back to the moment. I look into the sky, idly blurting whatever comes to mind. Feels like life has been the same for years, and now, everything's changing. I don't even know why. Mm -hmm. A wry smirk poses at my lips. I close my eyes and lean my head against the bench. 
Uh, get me a, get me some alcohol. Let's drink our sorrows away. Iri remains still, waiting for me to elaborate. You know, when people are upset, they drink themselves to oblivion. That kind of thing. Great idea, right? Now that's a contribution to society. Still silence. Disconcerted, I open my eyes. Iri is nowhere to be found. She... Uh, she would have taken me seriously, was she? Wasn't it obvious that I was joking? No, it's never obvious that you're joking to Iri. <sighs> Iri? Nothing. I quickly checked my phone. No message. M maybe she left for a different reason. Maybe she decided not to talk to me? Yama. Yeah, yeah. I whip around. Iri's standing behind me, hugging a bottle of sake in one arm and a bottle of vodka in the other. How did you- where did you get that? Oh crap, she actually took me seriously. Where did you get that from? No, never mind, how'd you get that in the school? Alcohol is strictly forbidden, and yet in the space of a, maybe a minute, she's managed to acquire some and smuggle it in. But Irie only smiles lightly, holding both bottles in my direction. Drink. She looks so proud of herself, I can't find it in me to refuse. But alcohol? Uh, what am I supposed to do with this? Uh, can you, uh, return it? You wanted to drink your sorrows away. Well, no, I, I wanted to get drunk. Ah. She suddenly sprints away toward the edge of the roof. Alarmed, I follow after her and watch in shock as she manages to nimbly jump on the branches of the tallest tree. Um, I guess she's a superhuman? And also, actually, may, she might actually be a cyborg android? Hmm. I can only assume she manages to shimmy down the tree onto the ground because her small frame is immediately lost, immediately lost in the foliage. Too alarmed to speak, I mindlessly walk back to where I sat before. I stare at the alcohol now that's now in my possession. Wait. Wait, I have alcohol. I could get expelled. I could go to prison. I could... Here. Gah! Where did she even come from? Didn't I just see her in that tree? Take this. She pushes a can of Starman energy drink into my already full arms. If you mix this with the alcohol, you will become intoxicated much quicker. <laughs> uh, she's so cute with her smile. I... what? But you will feel alert, so you want to drink more. Do not. I should have guessed that Irie would take my words at face value, but how does she even know all of this? Wait, 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 I don't actually want to get drunk, it was a joke. A joke? First of all, I'm not stupid enough to get drunk, especially given that my brain is only fa half functional as, as is. Yeah, you, shouldn't pro you probably should not mix anxiety medication with uh, alcohol, probably not a good idea. At least, uh, actually, I don't know. Is it the same as like, you know, for example, if you, if you like uh, eat like uh, painkillers, right? You shouldn't mix it with alcohol. I don't know if anxiety medication is any different. I mean, in general, you shouldn't mix medication with alcohol because you don't know what will happen, right? So, ah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just talking out of my ass. <laughs> uh, besides, it's illegal at my age. Not that Irie seems to care. Okay, first things first. How do I get this alcohol out of school without anyone noticing? I guess I could just ask Irie, but well, that doesn't seem very fair to her since I was the one who made her get it in the first place. Unintentionally, of course. How did she get it here? I know she can climb trees with ease. Maybe she also went through the ventilation or sewer systems. But that's ridiculous, isn't it? Either way, the key lies in her hands. Irie, how did... Bang! Ah! I watch in horror as the cork shoots out of the vodka bottle, sails over the railing, and plummets to the ground below. Ah, what the hell? Oh. Well, crap. Is this a cork? I gingerly peer over the railing. A student is clutching the vodka cork, squinting upwards. I hurriedly lean back before he can see me. Fantastic. I th and I thought this day couldn't get any better. Hey, Teach. This cork just came from the rooftop. Oh, this is a... Ah, this smell! Isn't there a party on the rooftop? Not an official one. I wince as the teacher storms into the classroom building. She'll be here any moment. 
Frantically, I turn to Irie, who is experimentally tasting the vodka. No, don't, don't trick the alcohol, Loli. Irie, we need to get rid of this now. Irie clearly registers the urgency in my voice. She promptly sets the vodka down and stares right at me. Throw it away? But, uh, no, no, just, just put it back wherever you got it from. Oh. She quickly hands the alcohol to me. I wasn't trying to steal it from you. What? what uh, why are you? No, 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 put it back where. Slam! Here comes the teacher. The teacher stomps to the rooftop as if she's searching for someone to kill. Jolted with panic, I make a vague shooing motion in Irie's direction before I leap out of my cover into plain sight. Uh, professor? Oh, crap, my voice cracked. Come on, where, where are those make believe skills? Are you. The teacher barrels in my direction, her eyes flaring. Oh, say so. The, it's the female teacher. Did you see any other students on the roof? Uh, no. So you admit that the cork came from you? She raises the cork with shaking hands. Dang it, I should have made something up. I should have said that there were students, but they ran away. Uh, what's that? It's the only half intelligent thing that comes out of my mouth. Don't play dumb with me, young man. Where are you hiding it? I. What? Come to think of it, why are you standing in front of this bush? A uh, bush? What bush? She steps to her right. I follow to block her view. She weaves to the left. I mimic it. Okay, that was definitely suspicious. So it's behind you, is it? Uh, what's behind me? You're digging your own grave, young man. Move aside. Now this is it. This is what all my years of suffering through school has turned into. This is the combination of my sucky week. You should be stupid. It should be trivial. Getting fired, or not fired, but like getting expelled from school? What well, does that matter in the face of five deaths or losing my friends? Uh, what if I turn homeless? What if I enter the aspiring abyss of debt and I have to join the Yakuza? And I contract tendonitis during a job gone wrong? <laughs> you, got a, you got a large imagination, Yama. Hmm. I suppose you're clear. She steps back from the bush. Surprisingly, it's empty. There's no sign of Irie, nor the alcohol. Uh, does she finally understand what I meant, or is she just taking it to a more terrifying purpose? The teacher suddenly whips to me, her eyes narrowed. Well, I apologize for suspecting you without any basis. She sounds about as apologetic as a toddler in a tantrum. If you happen to find those irresponsible students who are in possession of alcohol, give them a little message from me. They can run, but they can't hide. Then, just as abruptly as she entered, the teacher races from the rooftop, slamming the door behind her. I only sink to the ground, relishing the relief that washes through my veins. I live yet another day. What a ridiculous encounter. Yama. Ah! Again, Irie appears, as if from nowhere. This time, the alcohol is nowhere to be seen. I understood. I put them back. She's practically bursting with pride. Well, for Irie. Hesitantly, I pat her in the head. Pat, pat. Oh, thanks. She only nods placidly and continues to munch on her peach. Nom, nom, nom. Just curious, but where did you get that stuff anyway? Hmm. Uh, the vodka and the sake. Cafeteria kitchens. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. What, you stole it from the cafeteria? They weren't using it. Well, that's... It, it's still... Well, it's still the schools. It's illegal for minors to drink and it's, it's illegal to steal. So it must be doubly illegal for minors to drink alcohol that's been stolen. Who would have ever think of taking the kitchen stock? The idea is either genius, insane, or both. Come to think of it, how does Irie get her peaches? I swear that her stash is inextinguishable, or inextinguishable. Every time I see her, she has a new peach. It couldn't be. Irie, by any chance... Ah, uh, no way. This is ridiculous. All of this is ridiculous. Joking about alcohol and always getting expelled for it. Peaches. Endless peaches coming from nowhere. So much peaches. Murph bubbles out of me in bright laughter. Uh, ridiculous. Brain damage, memory lapses, bus accidents, mutilated bodies, double-faced informants, hurting Ryui, hurting Masato, 
Mr. Briota and Yahiko and Irie as serial killers, uh, my chuckles transform into an all-out hysterical fit. I struggle to keep breathing as my ribs ache beneath the instinctual heave of my lungs. It's crazy. All of it. What is funny? My throat aches as I struggle to master myself. Life. <laughs> Life is hilarious. Irie inclines her head, quietly waiting. It's invitation enough. Ever had that feeling where you feel like you know everything? But it just feels like one moment and your whole world crumbles to pieces? Like... La Roche Lamparade? <laughs> La Roche Lamparade, always La Roche Lamparade. I'm being likened to a fictional character from a show. Sure, La Roche Lamparade. He's a pretty cool guy, right? He kills people. Oh, that's a bit of a damper. <laughs> At least my finger is behind my head, staring into a nearby flower until my eyes begin to burn. I'm probably not any better. Ryu and I got into an argument yesterday and I was an idiot. I don't know what came over me, the kinds of things I was saying. I never thought them, not genuinely. We haven't fought like that well, ever. Is that what death does? Make you become a completely different person? She seemed fine, normal. I thought she'd be okay since she didn't see it. Iri considers this for a moment before she speaks. Every word is enunciated deliberately. Perhaps she had problems. Problems she did not want you to worry with. Or problems she did not want to worry you with. My parents were the same. Your parents? They died. Oh. I feel the urge to say that I'm sorry, but it sounds shallow in the gravity of the moment. I see. Irie only nimbles at her peach. Nom nom nom. Uh, how? I don't realize how insensitive that question is until it's already out of my mouth. Oh, well, thankfully, before Irie can respond, the warning bell pings. I hurriedly get to my feet. Oh, uh, I guess we have to head back to class. Irie silently stands next to me. They thought. Hmm. Aw, oh, sad, sad lowly. Every word seems labored, like it's painful to utter them. They thought? I was like explain how they passed away. I mean I assume because they fought, because they had an argument, that's what led to their deaths, you know? There's a strong part of me that wants her to continue. Part of me that's curious about this enigma known as Airi Hiraga. Or rather, well, I mean, when I say like they fought, it's like, you know, the, in the argument indirectly caused their death, is, what's, is what Airi is saying, right? But I can't bring myself to do it. There's enough craziest craziness going on. Fighting about Airi's past might just make things worse. Hey, uh, you don't have to tell me. It's fine. I move to the rooftop door, keen on exiting before I cause any more trouble. It's better this way. My curiosity just leads to hurting people anyway. Oh well. Irie silently follows me, staring at the peach cup in her hands. We part the stairway. I'm not sure what to say, but at the very least she doesn't seem angry at me, just thoughtful. I expect to spend the remainder of the time by myself, but I instead I find Misaki waiting by my chair. Ah, oh, Yama. Uh, hi. Do you want to go somewhere with me? What, now? No, tomorrow. Of course, right now. Class is about to start. Are you seriously coming up with an excuse to stay in school? Well, she's right. Normally I wouldn't mind. So, you're saying we should ditch? I prefer the phrase, investing our time in other endeavors. So ditching. You make it sound so ugly. As sudden as this may be, it might actually end up being kind of fun. Alright. Misaki the rebel as always. Time to ditch with Misaki. Well, why not? It's not like I'd be doing anything productive in school. Where were you thinking? She smiles brightly, gesturing to the door with both hands. Hey, you'll see. 
I obligingly exit the classroom right as the bell sounds. As we make our way down the street, newfound excitement takes the place of anxiety. It's definitely a welcome change. Surprisingly, she leads me to GFC. After we order and pick up our chicken, we slip to the, into the nearest booth. I found this place the other day. Their wings are really good. I know, I come here a lot actually. Oh really? Well, not recently because... Because of the investigation, the lapses, serial killings, Ryu, Masuro, Yahigo. Now that I think about it, when was the last time we all ate here together? Has it really been that long, or is my memory just that unreliable? Somehow, Misaki manages to catch the change in my face. She quickly leans forward, her attention fixed on me. Something's bothering you. I'm assuming it has to do with your fight with Ryui. Wait, how do you know about that? Because she told me. Well, more like I forced it out of her. Her exasperation is quickly replaced with concern. So you're still having your lapses. She told you about that, huh? And about Mizu, and that you almost drowned. So, what, are you gonna lecture me about that too? My response comes out harsher than I intend. Instead of getting angry, Misuki only raises an eyebrow in bewilderment. You jump into the river to save someone. Why would I lecture you? Not because I didn't save him, Miki. Because I couldn't even save myself. I just ended up being useless, again. I have such a damn dumber. She suddenly shouts something incomprehensible, slamming her fist on the countertop. Everyone in the restaurant immediately stops to look at us. Do you know what I hate most about you, Yama? The fact that you always bring yourself down. Yes, you could have died, but you tried anyway, right? You could have ignored him. You could have let that boy drown, and no one would have thought less of you because of your condition. So not always about succeeding, it's about having faith in yourself. Her fingers curl on the edge of the table, an odd heaviness to her tone. Even with your condition, you're a lot more capable than you think, Yama. So please, don't ever say that you're useless again. In response to her words, I can only remain in stunned silence. Is she actually commending me, even though I had almost died? Even though I hadn't accomplished anything? Well, it's better to try than to not, and you always need to learn from your failures, right? Um, well, I say that, but probably, like, risking your life, though, is probably a bad idea. <laughs> well, you don't have to, I guess, but, I mean, that's your, that's your decision, if you make it, you know? But to be completely honest, I almost feel a little touched. Finally realizing that her outbursts, outbursts had attracted the attention of nearby customers, Misuki's face blushes a bright red and she sinks back into her seat. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled at you like that. The pain in her voice is almost palpable, as if she has just slapped me across the face. Oh, uh, that's fine. We, we should probably finish eating. Yeah. We redirect our attention back to our food. For the next few minutes, we eat in awkward silence. I'm about to say something to break the tension until I notice re Misaki reaching for GFC's signature hot sauce. Ah, uh, Miki? But before I can warn her, she's already downing her wings like there's no tomorrow. Isn't that spicy? Hmm, the ketchup? Uh, that isn't ketchup, it's hot sauce. Oh. So it is. She merely shrugs her shoulders and continues eating, seemingly unaffected. You know, not even Masuda could handle that. <laughs> Masuda must be a wimp then. She says this teasingly, el eliciting a chuckle from me. Hey, you! Ah. <laughs> well, it elicits a sneeze from me. Ah. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure she's probably the only person who can beat Masto in an eating contest. I kind of want to see that, actually. By the way, have you seen that pat I sent you? You sent me a pat? Have you been, ever been? Have you even been using pat recently? To be honest, no. 
She sighs, motioning me to hand over my phone. I obligingly do so. Apparently, our kimono commercial has generated a lot of buzz. I was reading some of the comments, and you seem to have quite a few fangirls. I what? Fangirls, female fans, ad admirers. Why would I have admirers? Don't be so modest, Yama. I mean, you are attractive. <sighs> I remember you saying something similar to Yagiko the other day. Oh, don't worry. I think you're much cuter than he is. <laughs> Why would she think I was worried? How can you? S uh, how could she say that so blatantly? How do we even get on this topic anyway? Here, I'll read some of these comments to you. I'd rather not. He's so cute. I wonder if he has a girlfriend. I've never seen this actor before, but I like it. I like it a lot. The acting was so good. Are they really a couple? Uh, this guy makes me question my sexual preference. I'm a dude, by the way. Have you ever? <laughs> I think that should be enough. Feeling my face flush, I quickly lean over the table and snatch my phone out of her hands. She only grins at me in amusement. Now don't tell me you're embarrassed. Of course not. Then why is your face red? I just don't have your tolerance for spicy food. She giggles at this, absorbing herself in her own phone. You should seriously consider becoming an actor, Yama. It's not like I did that well. You did well enough considering the circumstances. I can't help but feel a tinge of pleasure at her praise. If not an actor, then what? I'll probably just manage my parents' restaurant. Hmm. She pauses, raising a questioning eyebrow at me. Here it comes, the managing your parents' restaurant isn't a real job remark. I think it's a real job. I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> That's what she was surprised about. I'm decent, I guess. Can I be your first customer? Uh, sure. You'll let me eat for free, too, right? What? No way. Oh, why not? Because you'll put me out of business. Put you out of business? I point to her empty plate. She seems to make the connection. Are you implying that I eat too much? I'm just saying you'd have to pay the full price. Otherwise, I wouldn't profit. You definitely wouldn't be able to profit if your arms are broken. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. I'd like to have all my bones intact, thank you. Well, you shouldn't call a girl. A sudden shrill emanates from her cell phone, cutting her off mid-sentence. Hello. Oh yes, I'm so sorry sir, I'll be there right away. She quickly cuts the call, clearing her food from the counter. Uh, what's the rush? I'm late for my meeting. You have a meeting? Yes, with my manager, after school. Oh. Ah, uh, quick! Finish your food so I can leave! She suddenly grabs a wing and tries to shove it in my mouth. Well, why, what are you doing? Why don't you just go? I hear it's bad luck to leave a restaurant by yourself if you're with someone. Where'd you hear that from? The internet, of course. I shouldn't be surprised at this point. Ah, uh, come on! I'll, I'll just bring my food with me. <laughs> After fetching a food container from my wings, Misaki drags me out of GFC. We stride into the warm spring tinted air. Misaki turns to me, pacing on a smile. Oh, thanks for teaching school with me, Yama. Ah, no problem. Maybe we can do this again sometime. You're planning on becoming a delinquent now? I mean, eating at GFC. I miss enough class as it is. In that case, sure. I like that. Until then, later. With that, Misaki waves animatedly, hurrying off to work. It was nice, honestly. Spending time with her made me actually relax. I'm ready to head back to my apartment, but a sudden ping brings my attention to my phone. Another call? Or, well, a message, I guess. From Akira? Sup, sup, General? Heard from a little bird in a turret that you were feeling a bit under weather. Wanna swing by a drama club? It's a party! Uh, figuratively speaking, of course. Drama club? Now? Well, I guess technically I have nothing better to do. Yeah, why not? Spending so much time with all the waifus! I wonder if we'll meet a Ryui there. Hmm. It's not a bad idea. Some make-believe might be just what I need. 
Especially with Akira, if that display on the rooftop is anything to go by. What classroom? A 2C, be there or be a cupcake. Because, you know, a square is just so yesterday. And cupcakes are delicious. I roll my eyes, but I'm smirking as I enter the classroom. Yeah, this should make my day considerably less crappy. 2C is just as generic as 3B. In fact, the only difference in my classroom is that it's currently filled with a scattered group of students. The number seems to be fewer than when I was last here. Good day, General! Akira pops from beneath the desk, face shining in a cheery grin. Glad you decided to join us! I end up smiling back. So, what's going on today? Oh, just improv exercises, having some fun and all that jazz. Our impromptu performance the other day was about as successful as a Puritan party, so we're taking the day to relax and gather our morale. So, it didn't go well? I can say with 100% confidence that it was absolutely terrible. And that's why the room is so empty. I see, nothing, I see that nothing escapes your eye, Mr. Holmes. Yes, many of our own number have deserted us. We are left stranded in the desert, wretched, alone. Oh, boy, or woe. Despite the dramatism in her tone, I notice that she seems to be happier. You like that there's less people, don't you? Well, that sounds so unpleasant. Rather, a smaller, more intimate group provides a better screen time coverage in the case that our lives are made into a show. A show? What? Uh, think about it. Stories with a large ensemble casts often purely focus on external conflict, while smaller casts allow room for individual character development and realization. That's how a lot of TV shows work, you know. And that's why smaller casts are worse for you if you break a bone. Just when I thought I was beginning to understand her, something like this happens. I see. Akira with the puns. Of course you do. You have two functioning eyes. But before I can respond to this absurdly literal statement, the club president claps her hands, gathering the attention in the room. Okay guys, I don't think anyone else is coming. Let's get started. The group shuffles into a circle. The president's eyes land on me. Her eyes widen noticeably. Oh, Yama Ishimoto. Great to have you here. You remember me? Why, of course. Akira... Akira frantically makes some kind of vague gesture with her hands. The president coughs. <clears throat> Akira brought you here. Uh, for Inspire, right? It wasn't that long ago. I noticed their unusual actions, but decided to ignore it. Right. Well, you're in luck. Today I've got some great exercises planned. You guys ready? The group, though small, lets out a hearty roar. The president slides a hat toward the middle of the room. Inside it lies a tangled mass of paper. Okay, let's just do some warm-up improv. Akira, do you mind? It'll be my pleasure, Prez. She eagerly shuffles forward and snatches a random slip. Her eyes drift over the words. My character is a lawyer. Hmm, a lawyer, eh? Uh, good, uh, Tatsuya. Uh, why don't you match her? I uh, sure thing, Prez. She also extracts, or he also extracts a slip and snorts in disbelief. A uh, dragon with an attachment complex to his captive princess. Okay, you, you guys know the drill. Three minutes, we're ready. Akira straightens, adjusting her jacket. Her partner leaps on the desk and curls liftly, as if he's actually a dragon. Go! Akira strides forward, whipping her finger to her partner. Hold it! Objection! Mr. Dragon, are you not aware of the severe consequences associated with kidnapping? It's a serious felony uh, offense. Your lightest sentence will be equivalent of 20 human years or more if you do not cooperate at once. No, you can't take her from me. She's mine, my precious. Akira slaps her hand convincingly on the table. Your Honor, the defendant? We're not in the court of law, little lord. Go away before I fry you to a crisp. Now take that! I thought that dragons were supposed to be creatures of honor! Must I challenge you to a duel? Her partner gives a long, dreary sigh, as if genuinely disturbed by Akira's incessant presence. Fine. You want to know, little lawyer, why I refuse to forfeit my precious? 
enlighten me. Simply this, little lawyer. You are playing by the code of humans. I am playing by the code of dragons. Shall I tell you what the code of dragons states? That a dragon can kidnap any poor innocent soul whenever they so please? No. In fact, little lawyer, it is prohibited for a dragon to withhold a precious maiden for more than 24 hours against her will, barring the major ex extenuating circumstance. Which is... If the place to which she must return is worse than in our own possession. The room gasps slightly. Even Akira's confidence falters. She, what? My dear, dear, precious little lawyer was, uh, cruelly, or oh, my, my dear, dear, precious little lawyer was cruelly abused in her own castle. It is safer for her here than anyone else. But that can't be. A brief silence falls in the group, punctuated by the shrill tone of an alarm. The club president hastily waves her phone as the room breaks into applause. A time up! Great job, Akira, Tatsuya. That was really creative. <laughs> that plot twist was a brilliant comeback, Tatsuya. It was so fun to watch. When Akira sits next to me, I lean close to her. So, this is just an improv or anything goes? Actually, it's more like a battle of wits. As the improv continues, a scenario is created where each person clearly takes one side. While staying in character, they must figure out how to win the battle of wits before time is up. That doesn't seem very even. Oh no, I'm just no good at it. You see, I should have said that the princess was actually Spartan. Therefore, what the dragons perceive as abuse, society perceives as normal. Hmm. That kind of improv concept is very interesting. I've never thought of something like that before. Okay, next. Uh, Yama, want to give it a try? Sure. I pluck a slip of paper from the hat. Huh, just my luck. A delinquent boy. What'd you get, General? An honorable samurai? A terrific knight? Uh, sorry to disappoint, but... Uh, hi, guys. I'm sorry for being late. Yeah, it's Ryui. Suddenly, the door flies open and Ryui comes rocketing into the room, dumping her backpack on the ground. My mind runs completely blank. Uh, Ryui, she's part of the drama club. I'd completely forgotten. <laughs> what a baka. Oh, perfect timing, Ryui. Why don't you play opposite of Yama? We're doing battle improv. Ryui's eyes land on mine, surprised etched clearly over her features. Guilt turns in my stomach as she shuffles away, her smile ad adopting a clearly awkward tint. Um, I, I probably... Come on, the hat's waiting. I, I think I, I forgot something. She inches through the doorway. I wrap my fingers in my pockets, trying to stem the stifled air out of my lungs. Riri? Riri halts in her steps, staring pleadingly at Yakura. Why don't you be Yama's partner? Horror spreads across Ryu's face. Fierce indignation. indignation. I, keep say, I keep saying this word. You know the writer loves this word. In indignation. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Rears in my stomach. I bite my tongue to keep my words back. Why? For all, for all days for her to interfere, why today? Does she know what happened between Ryu and me? Is this her way of exacting revenge since she got in a fight with Ryui? I... I have to go, Akira. What? Ryui? Ryui quickly scoops up her backpack and bolts from the room. Akira's face falls. Well, it was worth a shot. What's gotten her so antsy? An uncomfortable silence descends upon the room. It's more than I can bear. I hurriedly grab my backpack, my mind still clouded with anger. Sorry, I have to go too. Thanks for the performance, though. Wait, you too already? General, why? Goodbye, Akira. You know, Yama, I think Akira was just trying to help. Right? Trying to lighten the mood. Uh, by, by getting you two together and stuff. Ah, bleh, bleh. Anyway. I'm barely able to keep the snap out of my voice as I rush out of the classroom. I stop only when I break into fresh air. My thoughts, now broken from their mode, are racing uncontrollably in my head. Ryui? Train? Shoji's death? Seeing Ryui? Yelling at Ryui? Hurting Ryui? I even forgot that she was in the drama club. General, hold up! 
Akira sprints to me, face wrought with worry. Why did you leave all of a sudden? I clench my jaw, working to keep my words civil. Akira, I need you to be honest with me. Um, okay. Did you also ask Riri to come to drama club today? She... she usually comes, but I wanted to make sure. Well, that's answer enough. Why did you want to make sure? Because you wanted us to meet? Well, yes. Akira, please. I've told you this before, but you need to stop meddling. Look, you and I fought yesterday. What just happened in that classroom? Well, I think you might have made the scenario a whole lot, whole lot worse. General, I know that you and Ryui fought. What? My anger blossoms in my stomach. Then why did you plan this? Did you intentionally try to make us miserable? Is it because you and Ryui are on bad terms? No, Ryu and I made up a long time ago. Well, actually, it was just, it was just yesterday. But still, this appeases me slightly. I try to withhold my accusations. Then why? You need to make up with Ryui, General. I wasn't there, so I don't know who was wrong and who was right, but it's always best to apologize first. The words are unusually straight and simple, especially coming from her. Still, I don't appreciate how she's meddling, yet again. Here's the thing, I, I don't even know if we will, we will make up. We might just not talk to each other again, move on with our lives. Th that's exactly what can't happen, General. Don't you see? You move on, you leave loose ends, you end up with regrets that fester inside you like mozzarella cheese in an Indian summer. Even if it's painful, you need to make up. Because by the time you're ready, it's too late. She sinks into the bench. For the first time, I realize that her chipper demeanor belies an exhausted face. Too late? She spends a moment in pensive silence before she speaks. I can sense a story behind her heavy words. General, you know Shoji, the unfortunate soul who recently died. I do, more than I wish I did. He was in my class. I take a moment to swallow this fact. Shoji had to be part of a class, of course. I just hadn't thought of such an association. I saw him, General. I knew Akane. I knew their relationship. I knew she that she disappeared and he was taking it hard. I saw all the signs, every single one. He joked about suicide. He wouldn't talk with anyone except his closest friend, Haru. But Haru was in, his, in a different class. He wouldn't eat, wouldn't sleep. It was, he even was giving his stuff away, and he was saying goodbye to everyone. It's morbidly fascinating. Even while I can sense the heavy sense of guilt in Akira's words, I find the back of my mind cataloging that Shoji was planning to die. That incident at the train... was suicide? Well, yeah. I had, I, yeah, I had my suspicions. You know, the attempt at the river, and then the train? Pretty much, this pretty much confirms it, I think. I quickly catch myself. Now is not the time to think about this, I need to understand Akira. The weight associated with her guilt, it's not something that she should bear in the first place. He was a textbook example of a suicidal thinker, in general, and I just ignored him. Too awkward to talk to him, too weird to approach him normally, I did nothing. Ryui, Ryui talked to him, she did what I should have. She did? When is she? No, I shouldn't be surprised. That's something Ryu would do. Ryu with her big, soft heart. The heart that I brutally crashed. Akira, that, should, that just shows that his death isn't your fault. If Shoji died regardless of what she said, no, General, I could have done something. If I had just talked to him, if I had just smiled once, just waved once, just let him know that he mattered. He died, General. He died, and it was too late. I'd always thought that Akira's bubbly exterior would allow all the troubles of the world to bounce right off her skin. But she's taking Shoji's death harder than anyone I've seen. The pain in her voice is nearly palpable. General, that's what can't happen with Ryui. Life is just too short. You don't know what the next day will bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Words of advice, Akira. Words of advice. 
Or words of all words of wisdom, rather, was what I was trying to say. Anyway. You could get run over by a car. Or Ryu could get run over by a car. Or a nuclear bomb will hit Is Isamu and wipe out the entire population. It might sound stupid, but you have to make up now before you have any regrets. Oops. Keep scrolling my mouse. She laces her fingers together and stares at them. So please, talk with Ryu, General. Don't let the skirmish turn into a seven-year war. Hm, nice reference. It's clear and open and everything. Not Akira, but everything Akira, all at once. I know I should be empath empathizing with her pain, but all I can think is that I'm impressed. There's much more to her. A deep heart that I never knew was there. <sighs> I'll try to make up. I try to smile reassured reassuringly. She returns him. Her shadows relax. Her shoulders relaxing, not her shadows. Well, if you need some aid, you can always call for backup. I have a particularly dangerous concoction known as the matchmaking plan. All it requires is a nearby movie theater, a bouquet of roses. This isn't for a date. Well, who's to say that it can't be? I snort at this, but it comes a little more affectionate than I was expecting. Let's stick with a simple apology. Well, General, even if you want to be boring, I do want to give you any help I can offer. Thanks for the thought, but it's something I should do myself. It's between me and Yui, so I'll take responsibility for it, not you. Akira freezes at this statement. Did I hurt her feelings? I appreciate the offer, though. She only averts her gaze and shuffles away. It concerns me. Akira? Huh? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. I just, you know. That's really cool of you, General. It's very admirable. <laughs> admirable? That I take responsibility for my own crap? Well, I don't know. Is it time for me to get going? It must be. They'll all be wondering where I am. See you, General. Thanks for stopping by. And please, make up with Ryui soon. Bye. And just as suddenly as she appeared, Akira bolts away. Her words are strange, her analogies are unthinkable, and half the time I'm not sure if we're speaking the same language. But today, I felt closer to her than most of my longtime friends. Amazingly enough, I think they were actually starting to reach some semblance of understanding. Well, you might, you might not understand all of her, Yama, because I think she's yeah, she has a crush on you, Yama. That's the thing. That's the thing you don't understand, Yama. Oh well. I head back to my apartment, pondering the account encounter in my mind. Well, I mean, hopefully we do make up with Ryui, and hopefully nothing bad happens to her. Because <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, her being kidnapped, or at least quote-unquote kidnapped, um, is a foreshadowing for her actually being kidnapped later, you know, before we actually get to make up, right? I mean, that might happen. It would be appropriate. I wouldn't be surprised. But, well... Let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs>